everybody. I wanted to show you guys today how to rasterize. Um, I generally call this half toning. Uh, that's what the screen printing industry calls it when you're basically taking something and turning it into half tones. Um, so with the white toner um, printers, you're able to um, do what they call rasterizing, which is essentially the same thing, turning thing into half tone dots, which allows the design to be a little more durable. So I wanted to show you guys a couple different techniques that you can um, use in Affinity to do that. So starting here with a template did, uh, design that I created, and I wanted to show you a couple different ways um, to where you can do this without messing with your text. So if you have your text separate, like in this design, uh, you'll be able to do it. So I have this on a black background, and you can basically see the artwork and the text is separate. So let's go ahead and get started. So one of the fastest ways is by going the halftone route. That's settings that we can move pretty quick on. So let's do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the document and go to resize the document. Um, if you're ever trying to rip something, um, you're definitely going to want this at 1200 dpi. That's basically your standard setting for ripping something. Uh, now as far as the way the image is going to be resampled, you're going to want to select nearest neighbor. There's not going to be any sort of blurring or arbitrary adjustments that the software will make. Nearest neighbor will just extend the pixel out left right, up, down, from where it is. Um, that's your best option. And make sure resample is selected. So we'll hit resize. Give that a second. Depending on your machine, that might take a while. Um, and some machines, you're not even going to be able to do it. So you probably can just stick with your 300 DPI. Um, so at this point, it's pretty straightforward. What we're going to want to do is you've got a couple methods, uh, but I'm gonna go to the black and white red. So what I'm gonna do is with the art section, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that layer. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go to adjustment layers and go to a black and white. And in Photoshop, um, there's presets um, called max white, which is basically a the setting for all these hues at 100%, which this is. Uh, so that that's the default, I'm gonna close it, and then I'm just gonna merge it down, and that's, uh, Control uh, or uh, yeah, Control E or I think Command E on a Mac. I'm not sure on the Mac. Uh, so now we have that image, and you can see in the layers preview, um, our artwork is now grayscaled where it needs to be. Now I'm going to head over to the Live Filters section in the Layers panel in Affinity, and I'm going to head over to Halftone. So this is pretty straightforward. You've got some options, and you'll notice this probably looks a little funny at the zoom level I'm on. Sometimes it looks like a lined half tone, but when you zoom in, you can see these are dots. Now, when we really zoom in, you can see they're very blurry. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is bump the contrast up to 100%. Okay, and now that we have that, we kinda of wanna calculate um, the size of the dot we want. So I'm not exactly sure what the best setting is for um, white toner printers. But I know in the screen printing industry, it's a pretty simple calculation to make. So what we're gonna do is um, we're going to take the 1200 DPI of the document and we're going to divide it by the line um, per inch for the screen that we want. Like in screen printing, it's 35s, 45s, 55s, 65s. Let's just do a 55. So we're going to divide that by 55 equals 21.81. <clears throat> I basically just round it to the nearest whole number. So we're going to go with a 22 cell size. So that's a pretty tiny dot, and you can see as I zoom, the, the, the program's trying to um, anti-alias, but it's having a tough time, so it looks, looks very strange. But if you can zoom in, rest assured, that's the size it is. So that's the screen printing setting. I'm just going to bump it up to 42. I think that's probably a good size for uh, white toner printers, but you're going to have to play around, depending on what you can do. And then the screen angle, I'm just going to knock it into 22 which is a widely used angle. So once I have that, I'm pretty much done. So now from here, really all I have to do is um, either clip or use this layer as a mask. And I'm gonna go the mask route. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rasterize this layer by going to layer, rasterize, 
and you'll see it'll take the adjustment layer and any effects and stuff and merge it down so we'll give that a second keep in mind the document's 1200 dpi so this might take a second okay so that's now you'll see that we don't have a big issue now that everything's applied when i'm zooming in and out you'll get a little bit of a weird blurring effect but you can see it handles it much better we zoom in we've got a nice thresholded solid black and white pixels and now that we have that um what we can do is we can just turn this layer into a mask in affinity which is great but before i do that what i want to do is i want to group these two together in their own layer uh in layer group once i have that let's go back to that grayscale layer and then we'll go up to layer and we'll go rasterize to mask so anything that's white is going to remain visible and anything black in this layer will be erased so we'll go ahead and click that and now that that's happened let's go ahead and turn off our shirt color and you can see that we basically half tone this guy so now it's a different type of half tone because you can see the the nice soft edges that a white toner printer can handle um, just gets tiny little dots added into it this will help subtract uh, from the ink being laid down and add durability but also you notice we haven't messed with our text at all so that could be the same thing here um, we could always go back with these nice lines there's not really much going on there so you're probably not going to want to but just in case if they're, if they're thicker and a lot of ink being laid down you're probably going to want to add some dots into them i kind of like it anyways this design kind of um, has a vintage feel to it anyway so it kind of gives it a roughed up look so that's one method okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate inside this group the artwork. I'm going to drag it out. And we'll turn off that example. Um, okay, now the next example is I'm going to show you how to use a vector shape that we're going to use a gradient bitmap. Okay, so the second method uh, that we're going to kind of rasterize this design with, uh, we're going to use a, um, a vector shape that will have a gradient... Uh, bitmap applied um, sounds kind of an oxymoron because it really kind of is so let's get started what I'm going to do is grab this rectangle um, vector shape tool and make sure snapping's turned on I'm going to start at the top left corner of the design drag the rectangle down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this gradient tool and the gradient tool quick shot the context menu up here um, I'm going to go to type and change from solid to bitmap and then I'm going to go into the patterns that I have set up and I think uh, yeah I'm gonna use this half tone pattern 55 LPI at 22 and a half as the angle and you can see it's kind of a half tone but it's very blurry and I'll show you why in a few so what's cool about this technique is you can scale this down <clears throat> to however you want I'll drop it down let's let's actually keep it big so we can show you what's going on so these dots are kind of big for this design so I'm gonna drag that shape down below make sure my text is on top but I want to make sure it's on top of my artwork and I'm gonna grab these two and group them together then what I'm gonna do from here is this uh, layer with our vector bitmap gradient I'm gonna change its blending mode to hard mix and you can kind of see what, what I'm getting at here already because <clears throat> it's what it's doing is it's applying uh, the intensity of that pattern in the background um, to the artwork so what I'm also going to do is while they're grouped one thing I can do is clip to the inside of that artwork you can see I can get those faded edges so I just wanted to show you that you can do that I'm gonna back it up though that's not something I'm gonna do just yet so what I'm gonna do here is now with that gradient tool still active you can see that I can come in here and kinda of drag this down and have fun at any angle I want you can see it uh, definitely you, there's some loss um, of the the nuanced fading that's going on in these flames but I think it's a kind of cool look you know depending on if that's you know a result your client wants then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hold control and click on the thumbnail of the artwork layer which will then create a selection out of that you can also come up here to selection and selection from layer 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now go to this um, uh, vector bitmap gradient and I'm going to apply the mask to it. So now we get that nice soft fading and we, we get the effect that we're really looking for. Now, you're probably asking yourself, yeah, that's cool and all. Let's say I wanted to get rid of the black here. How would you do that? Well, pretty simple. All you have to do now is go ahead and rasterize this group. It'll merge everything down. Uh, now that that's down and merged, you can see we get nice sharp edges to our pixels here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to Adjustments and Invert. Merge it down. And then we're going to come up to Filters in Affinity. And it has a very cool one that I love. Go to Colors and Erase White Paper. I have also set to a shortcut. Control, Alt, Shift, Minus. Mine gets pretty difficult, but you can set this to whatever you want. We're going to hit that. And now what that does is deletes all the white. Now, you probably guessed it. All we have to do is invert it back. Because what essentially happens is... All the black in the image initially gets inverted into white. We use the erase white function to get rid of that white and then invert back. And we essentially have our artwork with the black gone. So it's essentially doing a knockout black, which is very cool. So this is another method. Okay, so on to the third and final technique that I'm going to show you. So I'm going to go back into that original artwork layer, duplicate, and pull it out so I can start working with it. And we'll turn off that second scenario that I showed you guys. So this third and final method uh, is pretty straightforward and involves some custom brushes. These are some brushes that I've made and are available for purchase. I'll have the uh, place where you can purchase those in the description box below. And it's pretty straightforward. You can use press effects. And I've got a couple methods, and it's essentially using a variation of the two that I just showed you. So let's start with a super fast one. And I'm going to start by creating that rectangle again. And right in the corner with snapping turned on, you can see that our halftone pattern from earlier is still in effect. But we're going to go ahead and change this. So I'm going to go to the gradient tool, go to bitmap. Again, I'll click it to get the dialog to show up. So in my pixel mosh pit folder in affinity in my brushes I have press effects and I'm gonna go into patterns and I've got a whole bunch of patterns and I think I'm gonna start with something like this I'm gonna hit open so this works basically the same way and I can scale this up and turn it whichever way I like so if I feel like you know this isn't the exact look I want well, just go back to bitmap, click it again, and pick a different pattern. So let's try this one out. I don't like how big that is. Let's just kind of bring it down a little bit. And that's good there. Now, let's turn off the background so you can see what's going on. So right now it's applying that, that pattern, the seamless pattern, but it's not exactly erasing away. Well, it's a very simple fix. With that rectangle selected, I'm going to hold Control and click on the artwork layer, and then Control g to group. Now that they're in a group, I'm going to go to the rectangle pattern, uh, bitmap pattern, and I'm going to go all the way down to its layer mode, which is a race, and it's a fantastic uh, layer mode because any of the active pixels in that specific layer that you set to erase will erase the ones below it. Um, you have to be careful. If, let's say, I drag this layer above to everything, you can see it'll erase everything below it. But the cool thing is, if you isolate a layer into a group and do it within the group you're only going to affect that layer in the group so let's go ahead and turn that background on so you can see that's a super fast way to to get some results so let's uh, add on a little bit more what I'm gonna do is ap apply a mask so with this artwork layer selected I'm going to apply a mask and I've got some great brushes here that do all sorts of different stuff you can use a mouse or a Wacom tablet which I'm going to be using here I'm going to select the brush tool, select my brush that I want to use, and in masks, black will erase from and white will add back into the mask. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take in the artwork layer. I, I'm going to kind of take away some of this edge here. Um, let's fade out some of this flame stuff here and just kind of hit, hit different spots with that 
nice distressing, and it's kind of like a plastisol distress of a shirt that's been worn a long time. Um, and then another cool thing is, and I just wanted to show you, if you're going to try to do it on this vector version uh, of a bitmap gradient, it doesn't work. Um, you can't apply a mask to that, so we're going to delete that. The way you can is you have to rasterize that first, so if you feel like you need to go back and make changes, I would duplicate first, turn off the layer, come back, rasterize it. So you're, you're rasterizing your duplicate. You always keep a backup of the uh, editable. Now we can go ahead and apply a mask to that, and you can see that it's kept the effect there. It's still erasing, and now we have a mask on it, because then we can come in here and, you know, certain focal points we don't want to we don't want to have too much texture eating away at stuff like that. You know, which tends to be eyeballs. People like looking looking at eyeballs. Um, so that looks pretty good. And then let's say, hey, if you wanted to do your text too, any of these text layers, you can do it. What I'll do is third artwork layer. But I'm going to just grab all these texts, group them, apply a mask to the group, and then I can come in here with these brushes again, make sure I have black, I'm painting with black, and I want to make sure I have my mask selected, which it is, it's highlighted that way. Then I can kind of come in here and add some more of this kind of t-shirt um, filter here. All right, I like that. And then I'm gonna go with this heavy brush again, and then knock out maybe some of the edges here. Uh, I'll get some in there. Yeah, it's a little too much. We'll get some for nope. Not liking that. Maybe a little here. Push a little out there. Okay. So text is taken care of, and you can always revisit your artwork layers too. So that is a great way to rasterize without actually having to do like a half tone dot. Um, you're doing kind of a more organic. Um, you know, worn in feel, which I think would be great results for the white toner printers um, because you're going to have that really great vintage look and you'll get the dur durability to the design. Uh, and, you know, eventually over time, the, you know, all designs are going to wear down, whether it's screen printing, white toner printing. Um, you're going to have some wear and tear, so it'll hide within this method. So that basically covers it. Um, I showed you three different methods, whether you're using a half tone. Um, or going in and using a gradient um, bitmap pattern to kind of half tone. Uh, and then your final one, which is actually getting in there and using a more organic rasterization method, which, which is a kind of a vintage distressing, you know, wear and tear distress, uh, which I think would be a real successful method because, you know, it will hide any of the wear and tear over time as well. And I think it's just a great look too. Um, the vector... Uh, or not vector distressing, but the distressing patterns and brushes will be available in my store. I'll leave a link to that in the description box. If you have any questions, please hit me in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.